Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. Back to the Tiger Moth this week, it's time to see how she handles. Remember, we're running on a 3S 2200mAh pack instead of the 4S it's supposed to be on. What we'll do is fly through a couple of packs and edit together some of the interesting bits. Then see about adding some of the detail parts. And yes, the undercarriage could do with being moved forward a bit. Even on this grass, which is rather well trimmed, it's a little bit tippy. The usual mod is to bend it forward a bit and shorten the struts. It's manageable, but even with full elevator it can still get away from you. Well, here we go then. That was exciting. The center of gravity feels a little bit far back, but I half expected that. Mixed with the elevator trim being quite a bit off, it was quite a bit of a handful. Now it's roughly trimmed, it's flying pretty well. It needs a good boot full of rudder to get it turning, but that's not at all uncommon with scale models. Probably means it's not ideal as a first model, but if you've got comfortable with a full house trainer, it should be just fine. Once trimmed, everything happens very slowly and predictably. The other thing the undercarriage can make a bit tricky are the landings. It's a similar effect to the taxiing. Once the SB drops, the elevators just can't keep the tail down. But it does seem like this model is nice and robust. Right, now we know it flies well, we can add some details. We've got a great big decal sheet and a nice little diagram on the instruction sheet for where they all go. You could just peel the decals off the backing and stick them down, but it's all too easy to have them stick where you don't want them bunch up, crease, and generally look a bit naff. So, while the decals are already pre-cut, I always cut them out so they're completely free. You don't need to be super precise, as long as you're within a couple of millimetres of the edge, it will make life a lot easier. And it's not a bad idea to write the number on the back too. There's not too many different ones here, but why make it more difficult than it needs to be? When they're all cut out, we end up with a nice load of decals that should be really easy to fit. Now, it's probably not the best idea to do this outside, but I haven't got anywhere else. We'll have to be really careful about the wind catching the decals. Okay, the idea is we want to roughly test fit the decal to get an idea of position. When we're happy it will fit, all we need to do is peel back a little bit of the backing and trim some off. Now we can very carefully position the decal, and when it's perfect, stick down the exposed sticky. Then just peel off the remainder of the backing while smoothing down the decal. Perfect decals every time. There's quite a few to fit, so I'll speed up the video a bit. The only tricky ones are the roundels on the top wing. The shape of the foam has a complex curve. You really have to take your time smoothing down the decals. It would be easy to get creases if you're not careful. And because the wings are foam, you can't really use heat to soften the decals. When they're all on, it really starts to make the model look the part. They break up the otherwise solid yellow nicely. There's a couple I haven't fitted, the main ones being the numbers on the cowl. I'm thinking I'll probably end up painting it black. That way, if I ever meet another one, there's half a chance of being able to tell them apart. Next, we need to spruce up the cockpit. As usual, I'm not going to go scale mad, but it's just a little bit too yellow, even for me. I've got a little bottle of Tamiya Cock Pea Green, which, from what I can tell, is generally what the inside of a Tiger Moth looks like. The yellow paint is nice and matte already, so we don't need to use any primer. Both the front and the back need to be painted, keeping the coats nice and thin. Let it dry, and repeat. I found three coats was just about enough to cover the yellow without any real iffy bits. For the area around the instrument panel and the side bits, I've got some rubber black, which is more or less just a matte black. Carefully painting up to the corner will give us a nice crisp edge if the panel decal doesn't quite line up perfectly. With the black paint, two coats did the job quite nicely. Leave it to completely dry, cut out the panel decals, trim off the bottom part of the backing and stick them in place. It's far from scale, but I think it looks infinitely better than the solid yellow. All it needs now is a pilot, but unfortunately he's still being looked after by the Royal Mail, so we'll have to do without for now. 
Well, here we are, back at the field. As well as detailing, I've also added 25 or so grams of lead to the nose, which has brought the centre of gravity forward a bit. I've also moved the clevis on the elevator pushrod a bit to take up some of the trim. Unfortunately, I kind of forgot to turn on my microphone, so there's no motor noises on the flybys, but it's electric, so it doesn't sound all that exciting anyway. Other than the lack of pilot, I think it's looking pretty good. It's being pushed around a bit by the wind, but that's not too surprising given how low the wing loading is. This model will really be in its element on a calm summer evening. We'll hopefully be getting at some point before winter comes around again. I should think it would be quite happy to carry some extra weight too. So maybe we'll have to add some other widgets to play with. A slick plastic bomb drop is always a giggle. An onboard camera would probably work pretty well too. And well, that's going to have to do for this week, so thanks for watching. If you like the video, do please hit the like button. And of course, if you're not already, why not subscribe? It's free after all. Bye guys.